congratulations and thank you for double clicking the link that brought you to this video presentation that I'm calling Casting the Net in Modern Times. This is a place for Catholics who'd like to know their faith a little better, for non-Catholics who may have some questions or even concerns about the things we do and why we do them. I'm Deacon John from the Catholic Diocese of Phoenix and over the next several presentations I'll be discussing a wide array of topics that will include Marian devotions, the Eucharist, and the Church's authority, and others. But before we start, I need to make a request. If after watching the video, you choose to post a comment, please be sure that your comments pertain to the topic covered in the videos. Now, this is for a practical reason. You see, Christianity, and Catholic theology, and more specifically, Catholic thought, is the product of 2,000 years and the thinking of some of the greatest minds in history. That being the case, it would be real easy to get sidetracked if the comments don't exactly match the videos that they're posted with. Now, I promise this won't be the last presentation I make, so if you're patient, sooner or later your comment will find just the perfect video to be posted with. Thank you. That said, why don't we start with a quick overview of what a deacon is. After all, most people know about priests and bishops and the Pope, but for many, deacons are still somewhat of a mystery. Let's go over to the church for a minute. Most times on Sunday, but whenever I assist the priest at liturgy, this is the way I dress. The garment that I'm wearing is called a dalmatic. Um, to the casual observer, probably looks a lot like what a priest would wear. And, well, his is actually just a bit more elaborate, as well it should be, because at a liturgical celebration, the priest is the presider. The deacon? Well, I'm his assistant. There are some times when a deacon can act alone, presiding at uh, baptisms, funerals, and even witnessing marriages. These liturgical functions are very important, and we take them very seriously. However, for the most part, our work takes place outside the church doors. Step into my office, I'll show you what I mean. Most days you'll find us working here, out in the world, as teachers, doctors, lawyers, store clerks, construction workers, and any other profession or trade you can think of. Wherever there are people, that's where the church needs to be. So that's where we go. Just like Jesus, we bring the gospel to the people right where they live and where they work. That's what we were ordained to do. It's a fact of life that many people spend a lot of time on the internet. So it seems logical to me that this is where I might serve God and the church best. I'd like to start by introducing two source documents that we'll be using in these presentations. I'm sure you're familiar with the Bible. Enough said there. But the other is called the Catechism of the Catholic Church. If you want to know what the Catholic Church teaches and believes, it's in here. Now, in a perfect world, if you wanted to know what the Church teaches and believes, you would just observe the way her members behave. But due to the effect of original sin, this is far from a perfect world. The Church, every Church, is made up of sinners who sometimes don't live up to their Christian calling. That being the case, there's a lot of misunderstanding that surrounds Catholic beliefs. But the truth be known, at every Sunday Mass, at every Catholic Church around the world, the people publicly state the beliefs of our Church when they recite the Creed. We call this the Nicene Creed because its basic structure comes to us from the Council of Nicaea, which was convened in about the year 325 AD to counter the Arian heresy, which denied the divinity of Jesus. The Creed starts with the words, We believe, then goes on to state exactly what the Church teaches in very clear and precise language. The Catechism uses the words of that Creed, Sacred Scripture, and tradition as a foundation for guiding the people through the challenges of everyday life. So anyone who genuinely wants to know the truth about what the church believes 
only needs to attend Mass on Sunday and listen to the words of the Creed, or get a copy of this book. That way, there would be no need to rely on what might be incorrect information, or what also might be called hearsay evidence. This is it, straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak, and in undeniable print. Feel free to hold us accountable to what's written here, because if it's in this book, we're supposed to be doing it. Listen to a sample of what you'll find in the Catechism. From the beginning, this one church has been marked by a great diversity which comes from both the variety of God's gifts and the diversity of those who receive them. The great richness of such diversity is not opposed to the church's unity, yet sin and the burden of its consequences constantly threaten the gift of unity, and so the Apostle has to exhort Christians to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Nice, huh? And again, the best part, it's directly from the source and in writing. Sort of like a contract. That being the case, I'm sure that you'll agree that this book is a must read for anyone who says they love the church, for those who say that they hate the church, and anyone in between. Everyone who wants to develop an informed opinion will find the Catechism of the Catholic Church an indispensable part of the process. Well, I think that's enough for this first session. As I said, we'll stick to one topic per presentation and ask that you do the same with your comments. I've shown you where I intend to get my information for the future and have promised to cover some pretty controversial topics one at a time. That said, until next time, I'm Deacon John, doing my part to claim the Internet for God and wishing you Christ's peace.